I've been a contractor for 20 years, and I've watched prices rise and fall. And lately, all they've been doing is rising. Now this industry, it's hungry for a solution. And I think we might have found one that might have been born before World War II. That old idea that I'm talking about, it's called structurally insulated panels. But we're gonna call them SIPs for short. They're pre-made panels, and you can think of each panel as a pre-made wall. It's insulated, square, and engineered to carry loads. Now, that means less on-site measuring, fewer trades, and significantly less waste. Well, in theory. You know SIPs were created in the 1930s during the Great Depression as a solution to rapidly building affordable, energy-efficient homes. The technology gained popularity after World War II, especially in the 1960s and the 1970s, as researchers and builders looked for more energy-efficient ways to construct houses. Yet, despite their potential, widespread adoption was slow due to regulatory hurdles, perceptions of fire safety of wood, and the lack of standardized manufacturing. Fun fact, one of the earliest advanced SIPs manufacturing plants was built in Canada in the 1960s, and today, we're checking it out. That company is Thermopan, and today we're gonna to be meeting them to learn everything there is to know about SIPs and how they're making a comeback. Hey Jeff, how you doing? Hey Chris, good to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. I'm really excited and, and I wanna sort of start to understand more about SIPs. Okay. So why would why is SIPs something that people are gonna to wanna to use? And tell me a little bit about Thermopan. Well, I'll give you a history about Thermopan. Uh, Thermopan is the oldest manufacturer of SIPs in the world. Really? Yes. Yeah, so we started making SIPs back in 1980. Wow. Okay. And uh, we've been doing it ever since. We do SIPs for wall applications. We do SIPs for floor applications, roof applications, and foundation applications. Okay. So any type of building aspect, uh, SIPs can be used. One of the things I'm looking at right now, we, we're, we've got a number of buildings that we're looking at building. One of them in particular is a six-story a building that we're looking to put together for low-income housing. Yes. Now, why would I use your product to build a SIP? So a SIP is what's called a structural insulated panel. So basically it forms a building envelope for a structure. So it gives you structure, it gets you insulation, it gives you air barrier and vapor barrier all in one component. Really? So uh, typically okay. conventional construction involves wood stick frame. So they'll frame a wall, then they'll sheath it, then they'll put uh, air barrier on the outside, insulation in between your studs, and then with a vapor barrier. We replace that all with one panel. What is the, what's a SIP made of? Like what are the materials that generally go into fabricating okay. a SIP? Yep, so the SIP is basically a sandwich panel. The core, which is an EPS insulation, expanded polystyrene insulation. We use a structural adhesive and it's laminated to plywood skin. So it can be either plywood or OSB, which is oriented strand board. And that forms your structural panel. So the foam acts as a web. Okay. So if you look at like an I-beam, for example, uh, you have a web and flanges. So the foam acts as a web and then your skins act as a flange. And together it, it forms uh, a continuous beam or a continuous column. For those of you who want to understand what that means a little more broken down, if you take an Oreo cookie and you look at how it's squished together and you've got those two outside cookies with a center, that's that nice white filling that we all like to eat. Well, that's essentially what that is. You've got two panels and in that Oreo cookie center, is what's called polystyrene. Now that's something we've been looking at lately too, as a product that's being used globally for a lot more than just SIP panels. So, okay, now I've got to understand exactly what these products are. Now, how are they used effectively? And what is the reason why I'm gonna be able to use these on this building? How are they gonna save me time? How are they gonna save me money? And how are they better than traditional construction? Because it's it's all components in the one, you've got your structure, air barrier, vapor barrier, insulation all in the one, you're gonna save on your labor. And time. And time, yes, right. So time is money, right? Oh yeah, it is. So, so then also the quality, because it's, it's an engineered wood product, uh, it's not affected by um, moisture or anything like that. So you, you, the finished product is by far better. So there's no shrinkage that would occur in wood frame homes. So you get nice, true straight walls. It's easier for drywall installers to screw anywhere. You don't have to look for, to, to fasten to the wall. You don't have to look for studs or anything like that. The, the overall building is by far superior. It's stronger. How many stories can I go using this product? We've, currently we've designed up to four stories. Okay. But we have the capacity to design up to six or eight stories. As we all know, an apartment building's enclosed shell. For yep. all of those who are looking, 
apartments have to be completely fire enclosed, which means yeah. if a fire breaks out in that one unit, it can't spread anywhere else. This is extremely important because obviously this is a wood made product and polystyrene yeah. is a foam based product. That's correct. Now, does that foam based product burn or is it fire retardant? The foam does comply with the uh, CAN ULC S701 standard, which, which is a which, big which, lot which, of words, which requires, <laughs> which requires the foam to have fire retardant in it. So what initially happens with the foam is that once it gets to a certain temperature, the foam will melt, but yep. it, it'll crystallize. And then then it will only burn once it reaches a super, super high temperature. Okay. But that being said, usually under wood frame, it's combustible construction, so you have to have a fire resistance rating. So Correct. for, for uh, multiple stories, you might have to be one hour or 45 minutes. It gives time for the occupants to leave the building, and then hopefully authorities come in to extinguish the fire. I have now my nice contained shell. Let's yep. say our floors are being taken care of. Yep. On a roof situation, yes. you know, can we use this for this application? You sure can, yeah. So SIPs are primarily like for roof situations or designs, it's mainly for low slope roofs. So like shed roofs or, or, or vaulted ceilings, SIPs are ideal for that application. Very fast to install, very strong, uh, very durable. And if you need the fire resistance rating, again, uh, it's usually the gypsum veneer mm -hmm. that you apply and veneers have one hour, two hour, three hour, even yep. up to four hour. Yeah, I've seen that. Yep. And you, that's how you comply with the code. Okay, so SIPs are kind of like a magic wall, but my understanding is these things have been around since before World War II. Is that true? That is true, yes. So I, my understanding is that they were first developed in the 30s but what held it back was the uh, the adhesive technology because it was used for aircraft. That's that, and so that's why it was more top secret that technology at the time. No way! So that, it was actually a top secret. That's my under product. That's my understanding. And then the adhesives were released for commercial use uh, in the 70s. Okay. And so we came across the use of the uh, of the adhesive, and uh, and my father has a background in architectural design. And he had studied this and he started pioneering it and, and experimenting. And he went to a trade show in Chicago and found out the adhesives that were there. No way. And then he then he was started some trial and error with some engineers and everything like that. And they started uh, making SIPs. No, so wait, 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 hold on, hold on. So when did you guys start this? We started this back in 1980. So you're like the OG of SIPs in Canada. Pretty much, we're the first ones in Canada, pretty much the first ones in North America. So Just you kind of, you kind of, well, you took that and made it more efficient. I made, I standardized it. Okay, so tell me, this is something I've heard. Yeah. Now, I'm not 100% on this, but I'm gonna ask it. How fast can you guys make a panel? So we can make, right now we have the technology to make a panel every minute. Every minute, that's every what minute. I heard, yes. every minute. Every so minute. get this, every minute, they can make a panel. So how come this hasn't taken off in Canada? Why isn't this the standardized building across the entire country? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's new. Maybe I it, new. You just told me it's from the eighties. Well, I know. Yeah, nineteen thirty nine. It's, it's like, new for most people. Just the exposure, I guess. Things have changed. Times have changed. Where labor rates are a little bit more expensive. Uh, builders are now looking. Uh, um, consumers are now demanding more energy efficiency. It's not just consumers. The yeah. entire federal government. In, yeah. in, in every country. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this that I'm gonna tell you, Jeff, is on a global spectrum, it's every nation right now yeah. is looking for ways of building better and faster sure. for their nation in yeah. their climate. We're looking at this right now, and this is a product that's been around since the 80s. Yes. The OG of this product is standing with me, and I'm, I'm highly looking at this as one of the main products that we're gonna use in our building. Yeah. I can't wait to investigate this further from a product perspective and I wanna look at the costs compared to traditional framing. That's gonna be something we're gonna delve deep into coming up. So Jeff, tell me something. How does a SIP panel work in a project like my six story structure that we're looking to put together? When the SIP is manufactured yep. and it's designed specifically to fit the building parameters that we design. That's correct. Right? Mm -hmm. But they're they're a manufactured product. That's so they're correct. coming out as a standard item. Yes. Then we're gonna modify them on site. Yes. So that means that our framing team has the ability to modify these if they need to be modified. That's correct. Because let's face it, guys, this is organized chaos at best. Because if it came unmodifiable, that could be a major problem. Yes. It could be a setback that makes that entire time efficiency of having all of this great product yep. <laughs> having to be sent back and changed. That's correct. So that could be the downfall for SIPs, in my opinion anyways, is on job sites, there's always changes that occur. Of course. Okay? Foundations are poured too long, they're not square, 
uh, the customer wants a window moved or a door moved or they want a larger window, things happen. And when you have a pre-cut system, it, that delays everything. Right. But with a standard panel system, you might have some variables that change, but it doesn't delay the order or anything like that, your delivery time. And then to make those changes, you can change a, pa a standard panel here for there. And then uh, it's just easier to frame and to, to make those changes on site and everything. This also makes these panels a little cheaper. It does. So the fact that we could standardize mass produce, that brings the, the uh, manufacturing costs down, which brings makes it more affordable for consumers overall. And it's a far superior product? Far superior product because the overall quality of the building is superior because uh, you have no shrinkage. Uh, you have nice straight uh, perpendicular corners, straight walls. No shimming is involved. There's no cracks. There's no drywall pops. There's no condensation in your walls. So, uh, it, so what you're saying to me is we've hit good, fast, cheap. Choose all three. Maybe choose all three. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now that we've taken a look at Sibs, yep. and you say you can build these things for under a minute. Okay, yeah. I want to go take a look. Can I go take a look here? Oh, no, 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 oh. no. Oh? No, we can't throw the secret sauce out. No. The secret sauce. That's right. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. All right. So Jeff says no for now, but you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking later on in the show, in one of our later episodes, we're gonna get in there and check this out. I'm now considering SIPs for my project, but before I commit, I wanna see if they're actually a game changer in the real world. Today, we're on site here in Toronto, and we're gonna be looking at how SIPs are used. Let's check this out. Now, when we walk through the site today, what we're gonna try and look at is the compatibility of the products and how they're being used. Let's take a look inside here and find out from the pros who are installing this, whether we have something we can work with or do we have to look for something else? Hey guys, okay, so we're with Lucas who is installing SIP panels for one of the first times. We're gonna get some really good, unique information and advice on how these products should be prepared, how they should be installed, and things that we can learn going forward that I think is gonna change how we look at how we're gonna build this. As it seems, unless SIPs are cut and measured exactly to the drawings of the build, contractors still have to do a lot of work to get them to size. That's a lot of potential efficiency gone out the window. And for me, that's not any good. Like this, it's kind of taking some time and it doesn't need to, I would say. So what you're saying essentially is, is if these products we're able to give you the right measurements from the factory yes. upon arrival, it would be, that would save that time. Yeah, for sure. Like it will be super efficient, I think. And after it would make sense. And the framer doesn't need to charge you like crazy amount of money to it for installation, right? Because- So you're gonna save more money. Yes, like obviously. Like, I mean like the builder, right? It doesn't make so sense. So without the proper planning, SIP panels potentially could be rendered ineffective on cost. They could potentially be rendered ineffective on efficiency. Let's take a look further into some of the stuff that we're working with here, and let's take a look at how modifications on site potentially could delay our ability to use this product. What's it gonna take to like get that inset in? It's kind of taking like a lot of time, right? So you're going like this, we're cutting now three inches, and for the other side after when I install the other panel, I will put three inches, and then I sandwich it, we nail it, and we don't need to like put like kind of to finish it after, like put plywood or some kind of finish. So that's multiple steps that yes. would not be required. Yes, if, if this done already pre yes. in the in the, exactly. in the factory. And this this hot knife don't can take like five and a half out. He can do like let's say four and a half max, right? So after it's hard to cut like five and a half of the insulation that you can kind of insert that bearing point like after if you don't do it like now, right? These panels, if they were cut out properly to fit the right sizes ahead of time, these guys wouldn't have to do all this modification. In this particular case, these guys use an OSB or an orientated strand board, which is like glue chips that are glued together. They can come in a lot better products, including ply and including magnesium oxide boards. In some cases, they actually can be made with steel. So what we're looking at today is the installation of this product. And we're hoping that this is gonna be the solution for our upper floors. Chances of this happening though, time will tell. There's a lot of potential issues if it's not properly organized prior to the site. It looks like it's back to the office for me because I got a lot to think about. Really appreciate you allowing us on your site today. Hopefully I'll see you again and we'll be using this system on our buildings going forward. Like for sure. All Take right. it easy, guys. See you later. Thank Thanks you. very much.
I'm gonna go back to the office, I'm gonna think about this. There's a lot to process here, and I'm not 100% sold that these sips are gonna be the best way to do this. With that in mind, I got a long drive, so I'll see you guys soon. Now, after thinking about this, if we can figure out a place or a company that can build with robotics and come up with a solution that would allow for all of these potential problems to be eliminated, we gotta go and track this place down. We just did an episode on AI and its potential. I mean, if AI could read the drawings and then do some type of sorcery, spit out all kinds of panels that we'd be able to use on our project, I could see that being a quick and relatively simple fix for pretty much anything. So I visited the guys at Romat, where they have a $12 million robot that may be able to actually just do that. Talking to Steve, we discovered that his robot has the capability of building up to 3,600 individual components and panels within a week. You may think that's impossible, but it's actually true. The machine that he's built here in front of us can actually measure, cut, put together all of the components that are required to build a house and be able to assemble it like Lego. You might think to yourself, well, why isn't everybody using this? Well, because it costs 12 to $13 million and takes two years to build something like this. And then you have to have somebody that's smart enough to be able to put it all together, which takes experience. And that's one of the things about Romat and the owner, Steve Del Duca. He has that experience. Over 40 years, his family has been working in robotics in the automotive industry, which is why I found it so unbelievable that I had to bring my son William with me so we could check it out. He's a big robots fan. Once we got here, we realized how absolutely massive this is. This piece of equipment takes up to 18,000 square feet in a factory once it's all lined out. Now, if we can take AI and bring that to the automation of robotics, I think we've just found the solution to our SIP problem. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Hammer that like button. I'll see you next time.